Hello and good morning and welcome to Sully Hall Christian Fellowship this Sunday morning, but not as you know it. We're not live streaming from the bridge this morning, but we've got a treat for you as a pre-recorded piece. This morning at the bridge, we've got an all-age service focused on overseas mission. If you've ever been to one of our all-age services, they're fun, they're noisy, they're interactive. You're getting up and down, you're making things, you're doing crafts, all sorts of great fun. And we realised that really it wouldn't uh, work well for a live stream. So this morning, so you, our online viewers, can still connect with us and more importantly connect with God, we've done a pre-recorded piece. There'll be a shorter were worship time just after I finished speaking and then our overseas missions pastor Sally Murkett will be speaking and encouraging us on overseas mission. For all of you who receive our weekly news sheet please do read that there's all the information that you need to know and be aware of in there. Other than that please stand as we start to worship together now and enjoy the word from Sally too. Have a great day. we stand to our feet. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we worship you, Father. For you are good, your mercy endures for us. Oh, we stand in awe of your grace and your goodness, Father. Oh, where would we be without your grace, Lord? Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King of all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? Who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory, the King of all kings. This is amazing. Worthy is the 
King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was This is unfailing love that you would take my pain, that you would, would bear, bear my cross. You would lay down your life that I would be set free. you've done for me. Oh, how great is the thought of God. Hmm. How great is the thought of God.
ocean, we're all singing. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's sing this. So heavenly, so like an unforeseen kiss, and my heart turns violently inside of my chest. I don't have time to maintain these regrets when I think about Hello and welcome to this week's uh, Sunday talk and um, it's on a subject which is really dear to my heart which is overseas missions and um, in fact I am the overseas missions pastor for Solihull Christian Fellowship so of course I'm going to be passionate about it. Um, where to start? Well I guess really it started when I was just a child and I was brought up in the Baptist church and uh, in those days we used to have missionaries that came back on furlough and they were usually elderly ladies who had a bun and who weren't married and didn't have any children. I'm sure that was a bit of a generalisation and they probably weren't that old but they seemed very old to me and they used to come back and visit churches and often stayed at my family's home actually and uh, they would tell the stories of living in gosh places that I could only dream about really and uh, living in little mud huts and telling people about Jesus but there was something about it that caught my imagination and so I've always wanted to be a missionary and uh, as a teenager I would often stand up in meetings um, when they called for those who felt God calling them to the mission field and in fact, at one point I went to Hong Kong because I thought that's where God was calling me um, to work. But uh, no, it wasn't. And I was told quite clearly that um, it was OK to do reques into foreign lands, but that actually I, I was to stay in the United Kingdom. So I have. But since then, since my early 20s, I have had the privilege of traveling all over the world I think I've I've certainly been to well over 100 countries. It might be nearer 120 countries that I've kind of worked in on and off. And um, you're probably wondering, how on earth did you manage to clock up so many countries? Well, it was because um, God called me into television and I ended up as a television director working for relief and development agencies, making documentaries about their work in post-war and post-natural disasters or wherever they happen to be working. So I got to see, if you like, the worst of humanity, but I also got to see the best of humanity as well. 
and uh, I worked in television for 27 years. I worked for Christian um, NGOs, non-government organisations, as well as secular ones, and I accumulated a huge amount of wealth, as you can probably imagine. And then after that, I um, was invited to take over running a small relief and development agency called Help International. And uh, so that meant I continued to travel and uh, have input into other people's lives. Um, and I really enjoyed it. I absolutely enjoyed it. And then there came a time where it was like that was obviously the door was closing with Help International and a new door opened for me to uh, work as a volunteer in the church as the missions pastor. And that's what I do today. So over the years since I've been in this role as missions pastor, I have um, formed some very deep relationships with several countries around the world from South America to uh, Asia and some parts of Africa. Um, I've been able to take teams with me and many people in Solihull Christian Fellowship have been on mission. In fact, I think it would really shock us all if everybody who went on a mission trip had uh, was to stand up. I reckon it would be well over half the congregation. And it isn't me that's just been the only person that has traveled. Um, we have lots and lots of people who have traveled all over the world um, just sharing the good news of the gospel, sometimes taking Bibles in where they were not allowed or forbidden. So at times it's been quite dangerous, I suppose. But personally speaking, the more dangerous it gets, probably the more excited I get because that's where I get to see miracles and just God's provision for me. So why do we do this? Why do we do missions? Um, well, because Jesus told us to. <laughs> he said at the end of Matthew's gospel that we were to go into all the world and preach the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. And uh, of course, over the years, that looks different in what we do now in the 21st century than perhaps what was going on in the 18th century or the 19th century or even the 20th century. As I say, when I was a child, missionaries uh, would go and give up their entire life to serve in a country. And they would just come home perhaps every three years for an extended time, which they called a furlough, to catch up with the local churches to let them know. Um, I was involved in doing a lot of prayer letters for overseas missionaries. So uh, I loved stuffing envelopes and sending them to uh, all over the United Kingdom, where people would be praying and supporting these various missionaries around the world. Of course, these days, it's not always easy to get into countries. Um, you can't really, when you're applying for a visa to a lot of the world, write on your visa application form, I'm a missionary. Um, so we often would say we're visiting family, which is true. We're visiting our Christian family, but we're, we're visiting family. Um, and today, the modern day missionary does look very different. And many are using their um, secular skills, shall I say it like that, um, either in perhaps, I don't know, accountancy, in IT, um, in the medical profession. And they would go to a nation as a, an accountant, a nurse or IT specialist or whatever. And then that's what they do, if you like, their tent making, as the Apostle Paul writes about. Um, and then also sharing the gospel with those. And uh, they might just do it for a short term. Um, and many people who are retired, of course, have more time on their hands, but have vi uh, valuable skills that they can still give. So even if you are retired and you're listening and thinking, well, you know, this is just for the youngsters. No, no, not at all. We are never too old. I, as far as I'm concerned, there is no retirement in the kingdom of God. So, yeah, missionary work looks very different today. Of course, many people say to me, but Sally, isn't it a waste of money? I mean, you take, I don't know, say five people with you 
um, at maybe a thousand pounds. That's that's cheap actually to go on a mission trip. So that's like six thousand pounds. I mean, think what you could do if you just sent the money. Um, and I can understand why people would uh, put that argument forth forward. And I have uh, questioned that myself. But the fact of the matter is, money isn't as actually the answer. It's teaching people skills and abilities. It's imparting knowledge to people, educating people. And that's what we can do. And when I take teams, yeah, I hope we do cause a little bit of an impact where we're going. But actually, the greatest impact will be in that person's life. I tell you, you will never be the same again when you go on a mission trip and you see how people live and you uh, involve yourself in other people's lives. And you realise that so much of what we do here in the West and the way that we live our lives, it's like it's all in vain, really. Um, and uh, when we, we talk about being rich, it's like when it comes to spiritual things, we are pretty poverty stricken here in the West. And you go to these places and you see God doing amazing miracles because they have no other place to go. They don't have an NHS. Um, they don't have supermarkets. They don't actually often have money. They are relying on crops that they're growing. And of course, if the rain fails, they don't have a crop. And I've met many people who have been just living off of grass and then God will suddenly provide. I remember once I was working on the in Mozambique on the border with Malawi and there was a famine going on and it was really serious and people were dying in their hundreds. And um, I was representing a British NGO and uh, I was going to film a whole load of uh, uh, beans and grain being delivered and we were in the middle of nowhere I mean seriously the middle of nowhere and suddenly it was like there was just hundreds of people coming and some of them had walked for days I don't know how they hear I guess those that it's the jungle drums that seem to work and uh, uh, I was there and um, suddenly this huge articulated lorry a flatbed lorry with a trailer came just absolutely full of sacks of um, grain and beans and then of course um, I, I, I did a, an address to people and prayed and it was amazing because honestly there were just hundreds of people and they were really well organized and they went into groups within uh, their village so, so like different village groups around and then from within those village groups there were sort of like some strong men that would come or sometimes it was women um, and they would pick up enough grain um, and bags of beans for that family uh, for that sorry for that uh, village for their needs and of course the the stores were going down and down and down and it's like you're just thinking oh god what's going to happen what's going to happen if we run out and not everybody gets um, some provision to take back to their families but I needn't have worried because when the last person came, we gave out the last sack of grain and last bag of beans. It was amazing. So I have seen God doing extraordinary things. And it was a great opportunity to pray with people and to share the good news. Not only were we just telling them about um, Jesus and what Jesus can do for you, but we were also giving them sustenance so that they didn't go away with an empty belly or starve to death on the way home, which could have easily have happened. Many of them hadn't eaten for three or four days. So I, I, um, I absolutely love going overseas. Um, it, I'm passionate about it. And um, these days, as I say, the face of a missionary does look very different. And um, I, when I was last in Asia, one of the pastors there said, Sally, can I use you as like um, a white British woman? And it's like, yeah, do whatever you like. If it's going to open doors for you, then yes, please use me. 
And so um, he said, because I am not allowed into to families here, they are not, uh, they're of a different faith, different religion. And I have been banned. But if I go and say I have a white woman from the United Kingdom here, trust me, the doors will open because it adds kudos to their family that a, a white lady has been and had uh, tea with them. So, so that's what we did. And of course, once you're in the home, it's like you suddenly realise the whole extended family is there. What an opportunity. And after you get over the initial, so what's the weather like? What do you eat in the United Kingdom and all of that sort of stuff? It's like, Holy Spirit, give me something. Show me something. Give me words of knowledge. And of course, he always does. He's just looking for that opportunity. And uh, so sometimes I will say, I just feel there's someone here who, you know, can't hear. Uh, and uh, God wants to restore your healing to you. And it's like. I end up praying for somebody and they get healed. Of course they're going to get healed because that's who Jesus is. These people don't know who Jesus is. And then um, sometimes uh, I've prayed for a lot of elderly people, particularly men who are, let's say, they don't really want to know about Jesus. <laughs> they certainly don't want to know about Jesus. But when I say to them, would you would you like some peace in your life? And it's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We want some peace in our lives. So I said, well, you know, Jesus is called the Prince of Peace. And I'm just going to ask him to come and rest on you. Would that be OK? And it's like, uh, yeah, that, yeah, OK. And then that's all I do. I just pray, Jesus, Prince of Peace, just come and rest on this person. And and then I just sit there and I watch what happens and uh, I can see these especially the older men just melting you know it's like they're just their whole body is just relaxing and and afterwards I, I wait a few moment minutes not many minutes it seems like a long time but it's not and then I always say so how do you feel what what, what has happened and they're going wow I just feel so peaceful that was amazing and then you have the opportunity. It's like, you know, my friend, you have just encountered Jesus Christ. And for some of them, you can go, you can see them sort of go, oh, bother. That's not what I wanted to hear. And then, of course, my pastor friend will then just share with the whole family um, of the strength, if you like, of what's just happened about Jesus Christ and who he is and what he has done for them. And how they can be forgiven. And uh, we have just seen amazing things happen. I've been with teams in uh, South America. And, and they've sent us out around the villages. And um, we've... You, you, you don't, what you do there is you kind of stand outside and you just clap and um, people will come. Then we've welcomed them and explained that we are speaking that night and we will be singing in the local church, which is usually some little hut in the middle of the village. And um, of course, everybody comes because they want to know and they want to see what the white people are up to, <laughs> what are the British doing here. And um we have some amazing opportunities. We share our testimonies and um, we, we share Jesus with them. And then we pray for them and we just watch Jesus and the Holy Spirit doing extraordinary things in their lives. It's just incredible. And to pray for little children, for the Holy Spirit to come and touch them. And you just see them swooning. It's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. Or you suddenly see them kind of like just as though some, they're being tickled. And I sometimes think, I think, Holy Spirit, you're just tickling them, aren't you? And it's like, it's amazing. And we see people being delivered from demons and all sorts of things. Oppressions, strongholds being broken in the name of Jesus. I tell you, I could I could talk for hours on this subject. But I just want you to get to give you a glimpse, really, of what is happening in our world. There are amazing things happen which you won't hear about on the BBC. There are little revivals going on in nations around the world, which you would be astounded by. Where whole com whole villages, whole communities are turning to Jesus. They don't even know who he is. But they've all had visions of a white a man coming in white clothing 
and talking to them in their language. And um, on one occasion, my friends went um, to a village that they were, were taking a, a medical team. And as they arrived, it was like, what's happened here? You know, they were all talking about this man in white. And they said, who is he? Who is he? We, we want to know more. And of course, they were able to explain that this was Jesus. Many people are having dreams. You know, Jesus is appearing to people in dreams. I tell you, it's very easy to think that our, our nation and our world is going downhill rapidly and the evil is prevailing. It's not true. The kingdom of God is advancing. And I really want to encourage you today, you know, continue to pray for your brothers and sisters around the world. Continue to pray for Jesus to um, speak to people in dreams, in visions. We may not get much of that in our country, but, you know, in many cultures, it's really important. They take dreams very, very seriously. And I know of many people who have um, come to faith because of those dreams that they have um, experienced. For any young people, I want to challenge you to think and to consider to become a modern day missionary and go out into the mission field that is ripe for harvesting. I want to include those who have retired, who think that perhaps their life is coming, you know, perhaps drawing down. They're beginning to take things a lot easier. My friends, you have a wealth of um, information that is of great value. You know Jesus. You can share him in ways that you have that depth of experience with him. You know your Bibles. Consider going. You don't have to go for 10 years. You could just go for a few months. You could just go for a couple of years. There are endless opportunities all around the world. And then finally, of course, before the pandemic, who would have thought that I could reach the nations through the internet? I'm not very savvy, IT savvy, I suppose. And perhaps it was always there. But suddenly, suddenly, I couldn't go anywhere. And I'm doing conferences into uh, countries that uh, I visited in the past, but it would be very difficult for me, well, impossible for me to get into now. And here I am addressing churches over the internet. Amazing. And I'm sitting here in my um, lounge and I'm, I'm speaking about Jesus and I'm praying for the Holy Spirit to come. And, and on my, tele, on my uh, laptop screen, I'm seeing people being healed. I'm seeing the Holy Spirit just filling people and seeing people um, weeping and crying and laughing and just enjoying the Holy Spirit. And I'm just sitting here observing this. You know, it, prayer can can travel <laughs> just like that, you know. Um, we don't have to be in the room for the Holy Spirit to work. We can pray. WhatsApp calls. I've, I've been speaking to friends around the world, sometimes on a weekly basis, praying with them, seeing God do extraordinary things. Wow, there is great opportunity, even if you don't want to leave your front room to 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 visit the nations and to impart um, the, the Bible knowledge that you have. So my challenge is today, I want you to consider overseas missions. You can go, you can pray, but you can also give and you can enable perhaps other people who would love the opportunity to go uh, to visit when they don't have the resources themselves. And that's what the kingdom of God is like, isn't it? Not everybody has the resources to pay for an airfare. Maybe you do. Maybe you would like to sponsor someone to, to go on a mission trip. And we will be doing more mission trips. The world is beginning to open up. So may I just end with a prayer. So Father God, thank you. Thank you that you are in the business of reaching nations with the gospel of your son, Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, you are still 
hovering and brooding over the nations of the world. We thank you that even if we don't hear directly, we know that amazing things are happening around the world in extraordinary ways that we perhaps don't see in the West, where food is just being multiplied, where illnesses are going in the name of Jesus, where people who are lame are walking, the deaf are hearing, the blind are seeing. People are being raised from the dead. And Father, we want to say we are willing to be a part of what you are doing in the nations. And that we would maybe today uh, offer ourselves and say, Father, send me. Send me over the internet, using the internet. Send me, physically send me. Whatever. We just want to be obedient to you. We ask it in the precious name of Jesus, our Lord and our Saviour, King Jesus, your majesty. We want to be your obedient servants today and answer what the call that you are perhaps placing in some of us today to go to the world in your name. Amen.